Hey, what's up? This is Josh Todd from Buck Cherry, and you're watching That Just Happened. Check it out. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Front Row Joe, caught up with Josh Todd from Buck Cherry playing at culture room in okay. south florida uh little intimate club man this this you're gonna blow the roof off this place tonight aren't you yeah we've done many shows here we've had a lot of fun here um they always treat us well and the crowd is is always uh, consistent so um we like coming here yeah 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 awesome man well uh first things first let's uh let's talk about the new record man uh war paint and uh the first really writing uh, solely with uh, Stevie D, although I know since he's been with you since 2005, he's had a smattering of, of credits on a couple of records, but uh, this is pretty heavy lifting for him along with you for this record, correct? Um, no, you know, I mean, uh, I'm heavily involved in all the writing of, of Buck Cherry Records, so nothing changed for me, really. I, um, you know, Stevie and I got the opportunity to make a great record before this record. Uh, we did the Josh Todd and the Conflict record, Year of the Tiger, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Real labor of love for us, you know. Stevie and I have known each other since I was 19, way before he was in Buck Cherry. So, um, you know, he's he's got so much talent, and uh, he didn't get the opportunities in the past because of the politics of the band, you know. And, and this time he got to shine and really shows this is one of our best records for sure and um we're really having a good time playing these songs yeah and and i've heard that you said you consider this one of the best records since 15 uh not to take anything away from the other four records that that follow that but what or what is so much better say than like black butterfly or, or rock and roll it's just reminiscent of um the 15 cycle you know um before 15 we had lineup changes it was a long time since the last record that we had put out since time bomb and and um whenever this band is kind of uh put in a situation where we got to make our best work we we always rise to the occasion we did so on 15 and this is very similar uh the writing process we, we worked really hard on it um we started writing in uh November of 2017 and we wrote about 30 songs for uh, a 10 song record so it just goes to show you how thorough we were and and um, just wanted it to be song to song just uh, something amazing you know and we're very proud of it yeah it makes you wonder about the other 18 songs that didn't make it <laughs> <laughs> well you know you can just sometimes we'll use bits and pieces of those stuff you know of that stuff like later down the line but uh, usually they didn't make the cut for a reason. Yeah. 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 And coincidentally, 15 and the new record, War Paint, same producer, Mike Plotnikoff. Yes. Uh, what does he bring to the table with that special, you know, recipe that brings the best out of you guys? Since again, 15 War Paint, uh, some of your be better works, according to you. Man, we just want to have a really great time making a record again, and he's a really lovely guy. You know, he's just a cool dude to hang out with. Really talented and. Um, He's made so many great records since 15, you know, and uh, we just liked the sonic value of those and, and just thought the quality and everything that it was uh, the way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you mentioned that sonic, I think you, the words you used were sonically relevant is what you were going for for this record. What does that actually, actually mean? I don't know if I use that, but uh, I think we just wanted to, uh, you know, active rock radio has a very... Uh, it's got this formula and uh, I'm not necessarily fond of the formula it kind of you know cuz a lot of bands sound the same there's not a lot of dynamics but um you know Mike's really good at kind of we wanted to kind of fit in that formula for radio and still you know carry the integrity of, of Buck Cherry and I think we did so on, on a few songs and then we also made traditional like Buck Cherry uh, type rock songs as well you know but that was kind of the goal yeah yeah. Speaking of traditional, this is one of the non-traditional, I think people would agree. You've done Highway Star and some re-releases. You've covered Sammy Hagar, even Elvis Costello, but none have made it onto a record record, not like Head Like a Hole. Um, certainly not your typical rock and roll, but you guys pulled it off uh, greatly, I, I think. It's one of the favorite tracks on, on that record. But uh, did, did you see that it was a bold move to include it on, on the record? 
You know, it just happened very organically, really. Um, you know, the cover conversation comes up in every record cycle. It's always talked about. Um, I think every band has to deal with it. But uh, uh, I just wanted to come in with a song that I thought would be great uh, with my voice and my vocal range and also something that I could own and kind of make my own. I really like the lyrics in the song. I love the Pretty Hay Machine record. Um, I like what Trent stands for, you know. I think he's really stuck to his guns and created his own world, his whole career, and that's really impressive uh, to me. And and so uh, we were set up to record, and I just said, hey, let's try this song. It might be cool. We'll just see how it goes. And we jammed out, had like a hole, and we didn't know Mike Palatnikoff was recording us. And um, he told us to come in there. He threw up a rough mix. And he cranked it up and it was like, bam, it sounded like a Buck Cherry song, um, you know. And uh, we were like, we got we to gotta play this for our team and, and see what they think because it was really special. And just kept hanging around and finally uh, it made the cut. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. So we're less than a week out from uh, the debut album Buck Cherry hitting 20 years uh, as, a, uh, as a record. It seemed kind of wild that that's... Uh, that that that's a milestone coming up? It's bizarre, you know, I don't really think about it, you know, because uh, I'm always, you know, thinking about the next step and uh, that's what you do when you've been self-employed for 20 years. Um, you're always thinking about, okay, how can I make this better? What can I do? Where's the next song coming from? And, and so, um, yeah, looking back, it's like, it's actually what I dreamed about when I was uh, when I started this thing. I wanted to be in one band for my whole career and make a catalog of music and and really kind of put my mark on the situation. and And I think we've done that. I think you know Buck Cherry's never been a mainstream rock band since we started. You know, and uh, it's very hard to have longevity and rock music. And we managed to do that and, and really create a sound, a rock sound that is uh, very unique. You know, when you hear a Buck Cherry song, you know it's Buck Cherry, and I'm really proud of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, again, 20 years, you wanting to be in a band for that long. You're the only original member. Uh, what keeps you carrying that banner and plodding along and, and churning out the, the Buck Cherryness? I mean, it's funny. I started this band uh, uh, recording on the edge of my bed in my apartment on a four track just to some drum machines. And, um, you know, it's come full circle. I was the youngest guy when we started out. I knew I'd be the last man standing. You know, I have, uh, I am relentless in my approach. Um, I like to work, you know, and uh, this is not an easy life being on the road for the majority of your life. It's, it's very, it's a very challenging existence and some people just can't deal with it, you know, and I understand that. And, you know, every time we've had a lineup change, we've always made the band better and this is the best it's been. I mean, we got uh, great players and, and you'll see it tonight. Yeah. yeah. And so Warpaint, eighth studio album for you. Again, we're talking about 20 years ago, this uh, fantastic journey started. Compare and contrast uh, the songwriting between Buck Cherry and, and Warpaint. What, what has changed? Nothing's changed. I write all the lyrics and melodies. I write some of the music as well. Um, and I always just get a partner to collaborate with. And Stevie uh, uh, stepped up to that and he did a really great job. He's a really talented guy. He's, uh, he's a great singer. He's a great guitar player. He's, uh, he's great at um, uh, putting together full compositions and, and throwing me softballs, I like to call it, and making it a really nice landscape for me to you know do my thing and create a story. And, um, and we really developed our songwriting language, like I like to call it, during the Conflict record. So by the time we got to the Buck Cherry uh, record, it was, uh, we just knew exactly what we needed to do, you know, and, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, you guys came together like, uh, went together like cocaine and waffles, as they say? There you go. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Had to throw a Ricky Bobby in there. <laughs> um, Last question then, uh, again, looking back over, over 20 years, uh, we're all about the that just happened moments. Um, is there any one particular one that stands out to you where after it happened, you're like, oh my God, that just happened? Uh, there's so many of them, but uh, I, I have to say like one time we played this biker event and it was on private property in Indiana. And because it was on private property, no law enforcement could go out there. So it became like, it was it was a really crazy thing to put Buck Cherry in the middle of. It was like uh, 
when you drove in there, it was like a nudist uh, colony. It was crazy. There was people naked on motorcycles and people doing all kinds of shenanigans going on. But when we went on stage, there was the whole front row was literally like seven women. And they weren't like young, attractive women. And I'm not saying they were unattractive, but they were, you know, all uh, makes and sizes and everything. Seven of them in the front row, completely naked. And then you know, and even during that show, some dude asked his old lady to marry him during Sorry, and just a lot of stuff went on in this event. And then when we were leaving, uh, we're leaving the show in the bus, and they had a building because it's kind of a campground, so they had one building where the lavatories were. And there was some dude in his cowboy hat and and cowboy boots and nothing else getting a blow job <laughs> waving goodbye to us and uh, it was kind of the end of a really uh, interesting um, you know night for us just going in there and doing that uh, I'll never forget it yeah yeah wow, that's definitely one of those moments definitely appreciate you sharing that can't wait for the show tonight yeah. guys Josh Todd Buck Cherry and that just happened Thanks.